Okay, next thing, this is where you start to participate. And by the way, so far you haven't asked any questions. You were perfectly um, at liberty to, but never mind. Um, we're going into the cutting exercise. And um, I will show a clip, and then we'll have a look at how we might cut that. And um, I'm going to throw it to you to come up with some suggestions. First of all, how do you tackle this thing? So if you click on that, hopefully... It won't immediately, that's right, we will see the original clip first. It's about a minute and it was taken in uh, um, Waterford Glassworks. I'm sure they have a, a more fancy name than that, but anyway, Waterford Crystal, that's it. Um, when we come round to the first, second and third cuts, you will find I've actually added a few seconds of the previous shot and the, and the shot afterwards, just to give it some context. But if I tell you that I was watching this man doing some glass cutting and it's just one of the scenes that I want to show of the overall process in, in uh, Waterford Crystal. So we'll look at it, it's one minute long and then we'll come back and I'll ask you, well, what would you do it? Oh, there is just one other thing. Um, I have put a couple of um, sort of subtitles on to say long shot, first medium shot, second medium shot, um, just to give you some sort of handle. So if you can say, no, what I would do is I would go from the long shot to the close-up shot or something. At least we'll know what you're all talking about. Okay, thanks, Roger. I assume that you would all think that um, I should not simply insert that in my form. I have to do some editing of some sorts. So, um, would you like to just put your thinking caps on and come up with suggestions? What am I going to do with it? Well, firstly, give it a title. Sorry? Give it a title. So oh, well, no, no, this is just one sequence inside the, the whole film. So, okay. yeah. So, so the question is, um, where do you think I should cut it and how much and, uh, and what, what should I do with this, this one minute of film? Given the, given the overall length of your planned film and so on, what was the sort of rough time period you envisaged this would finish? Well, that, that's the final a time? very good question because that's exactly what I was... What I would tackle first is I would have some sort of a budget and actually you'll find that I came down with about 20 seconds. So that means that 40 seconds has to be thrown away. So now I have to pick the 20 seconds. And the next question then is um, which bits of it will I pick and what order will I put them in? With the clip that um, it was a fairly medium chart, I believe, where you could, that camera angle was actually on his hand yeah. and you couldn't see the contact between the glass and the wheel. So that particular clip for me, I would just ditch it. Okay, so that bit goes out. Yeah. Yep. Take the zoom out, it's another option. The zoom, yes, yes, have that out. Um, a lot of people feel queasy when you zoom in on something. So if you're going to zoom in, do it slowly. Zooming out is less, for some reason, makes us feel less queasy. The long shot showed the actual product, the glassware, mm -hmm. and the the you know the the first clip showed yeah. the detail, which was quite interesting. So I thought I'd keep in I would keep in those two bits. Perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
Well, how, how about going back to the days of Sini? And maybe thinking a long shot to see what's going on, a medium shot to get a bit closer to this fellow, and then a close-up shot. Well, I think on this one you could probably afford to break the rule there because you could actually get quite, uh, you know, quite challenging to fit the audience, if you like, by starting fairly close, you know, starting with fairly close up. You are a genius. Because you are a then, genius. And then pulling out the wrong shot. <laughs> That's exactly what, what we're going to finish up doing. <laughs> but meanwhile, we're going to have a look at um, uh, the first cut where I did it, approached it in my classically trained uh, manner, uh, long shot, medium shot and close up. So as you saw, I added a little bit of something else at the beginning and the end, just so you could feel that it had a, a place in the film. Um, as you can see from the fact there's a second and a third cat, I wasn't 100% happy with that. Um, any suggestions why I might not have been quite so happy with it? You've got effectively jump shots. He was doing one operation and then the next shot showed him doing it in a totally different position. If, say, he was grinding the, the glass, um, he was then suddenly he was holding it without any sort of transition, is, is my feeling. Well, you're, 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 have... you're very close to being what, what's upsetting me. Um, it's because the two shots are too close together. The medium shot isn't medium enough that it makes it seem like a bit of a jump shot. So they're both at about the same distance, and then you, as you seem to go from um, one position to another, and they're too close together. Okay, so... You've got, you've got a lot of redundancy built in there. Oh, sorry? You've got redundancy in the information, in the sense, as you say, it's probably because your shots are not widely enough spaced well, out. Exactly. You've yes. got enough information in the first one of what's going on, to make the latter stages actually not. So I could have done it with two shots instead of three. Yeah. yeah. But in fact, I chose to keep three in, but never mind. <laughs> I could have. Because there's no right answer to any of this, by the way. All I'm trying to do is take you through a, th a thought process that says, you know, think about it. As Neil said, first of all, think how long do I want it to be? And if it's throw away 40 seconds, okay, well, I've got to keep 20 seconds. What should I keep? And if it's going to be three shots, well, that's about seven seconds each. And that immediately you've got some idea, well, I need to find the best seven seconds of this and that and the other. So, um, actually, as Neil has already jumped to the conclusion, I decided for the second cut to go straight in with the, the close-up, then to draw back, and then to go back to the medium shot, which, to be honest, is, is very close to being another close-up. I was pretty happy with that on the whole. Um, what was originally the third shot has now become the first one. The transition between the middle shot and the end shot now um, is very natural. I don't know how I did it, but it worked out right the first time. And I, if it's right, don't fix it. Um, I just left it well alone. I'm not exactly sure what I did. I must have cut on the action or done something, and it seemed to come out right. In fact, this second cut is very, very close to what the third cut will be. So, um, I will show you the third cut. I just did a final bit of polishing. At the end of, of these three shots, the guy is cutting, and then I had him moved down, and then I went to something else. This time, I've now, as he goes up like that, I cut, cut on the action, I'm on to something else. 
So um, it's it's very similar, um, but I just polished it a little bit. But it is an opportunity for you to see now the transition between the what will be the middle shot and the end shot, and see if it works because I think it's very lucky and absolutely perfect. There we are. There's nothing more that I can say about, about that, except for one thing. There was one big improvement between the original clip and all of the cuts. Um, Tony, who's seen it before, spotted the, the, the difference last time. Um, I'll give somebody else a chance to spot the difference this time, and if you can't, we'll ask Tony, if he can remember. No. Well, this could be embarrassing to me. <laughs> no, you can't remember Tony? No, I wasn't concentrating on it that much. I, as much I, as I think ought. you dropped the sound. The sound, <laughs> that whining voice in the background from the guy mm. has mercifully disappeared. Yeah. 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 I will come back and pick up that point later when we get to, to looking at audio editing, but it's one of the things that has happened. So I have finally in this section, a little clip from Steven Spielberg. Let's see what he's got to say. Verna Fields made many good contributions to Jaws. We all refer to Verna Fields as Mother Cutter uh, because she was very earthy and very maternal. She cut her films at her house, in her pool house, in the San Fernando Valley, and it was a very Hamish -a kind of a work place. The shark didn't work as well or as often as it was supposed to work according to the screenplay. That's the spot. We had a contest where Verna would stop the movieola on a frame where she wanted to make the cut and I would stop it where I wanted to make the cut and if ever we stopped it on the same frame that had already been marked with a grease pencil X, we knew that was the right frame on certain things where we didn't agree. And we all of our disagreements always happen with that darn shark. <laughs> Verna was always in favor of making less to be more. And I was trying to squeeze that one more because it took me days to get the one shot. So I'm going back to, I'm on a barge for two days trying to get the shark to look real. And, and the sad fact was the shark would only look real in 36 frames, not 38 frames. And that two frame difference was the difference between something really scary and something that looked like a great white floating Out of my way. <laughs> 